Happy, Happy Place Home Studios. <laughs> <laughs>Happy Place Home Studio series on the Line 6 Helix. This is part two in which we will discuss creating and modifying presets. So what are presets in the Helix? Well, presets pretty much make the world go round. With a preset, you can define a very simple or very complex amplifier, effects pedals, and many, many other components of a configuration that's going to make the sounds that you want to make with the Helix. It's how you define where your input's coming from, where your outputs are going to, what your stomp board configuration will be for this particular preset. You can define how MIDI is used. You can really keep it at a very simple level or you can really keep it at a very deep level. And we're going to get you started by showing you how to create your own presets and then modify those presets or any other preset that you may have copied as you learned in part one of this series. Presets are really cool to work with. They're very powerful. Uh, you might consider them a little bit complex, but they're only complex, I think, for doing complex things. For doing simple things, they're pretty simple to, to learn and use. There's some interesting challenges uh, recording this particular uh, series, and uh, I'll talk a little bit about that as we launch here. But... Buckle up and get ready to learn about Line 6 Helix presets. One thing that happens here at Happy Place Home Studio is I have to set up some pretty interesting shots for recording some of the different various things that I want to record for the channel. And uh, this one is very interesting. Sometimes it's like a jigsaw puzzle. Because what I'm trying to accomplish is I want to record... Um, programming the Helix uh, with a new preset or changing an existing preset, which is this name of this chapter. Um, but to do that, um, you know, you've got to use the screen on the Helix. You don't have any real way just using the, the Helix floor to put that screen on a computer so you can record it. So that means I need to take a video of it. And if you, look, if you watch other uh, videos out there, they're all pretty much the same. The one thing you can do in an in in upcoming uh, chapter of this series, we're going to cover Helix Native, but the interface is not the same. So I need to record that screen. One challenge that presents for me with my poor eyesight is that in order to, to, to use that screen, I've got to be right on top of it. I've got to be like a couple of inches from it to be able to see it. So that doesn't work because then I'd, I'd block your view. So what I set up here is this camera is recording that screen. But it's also simultaneously putting the screen on that big screen you can see over there. And I can see that. And so I'll be able to, to program it and record program it using that screen. Then I've got um, my Black Magic camera recording this view, this shot, but also recording the audio. So the audio, I'm using this lav mic going through the, uh, the excellent audio interface of the Black Magic, and that's how you're hearing my voice. But the guitar out of the Helix is coming out the XLR uh, mono out. I should be using stereo, but I'm just going to use mono in this case. But I'm, I'm, I'm taking that out to my 1248 to get into my audio system. So I'm recording the audio track for the guitar in my DAW software. So pretty interesting little combination of things. Now, I, I, I could have just run this to an amp. I could do that but you wouldn't get very good sound quality, and I do want that to be a part of the experience here so that you're, you know as you're doing a preset, you can use your headphones or you can use your DAW or whatever to get really excellent sound quality so you know exactly what you're doing, not just out of a, um, you know, a power speaker or an amp. So that's what we're doing, and uh, we're gonna dive into um, how to set up a new preset or modify an existing preset on the Helix. Okay, we are ready to create our first preset. That's not my first preset, but it's our first preset. So, you know, you, you don't have to have anything really planned out to create a preset. You can 
You can do it as you go. And I suggest that you do that your first couple of times, just play around. But if you want to, you can use the list uh, that I provided earlier in the video of the, of the mapped uh, amps, mapped effects, and go for a specific sound with a specific model. In this case, we're just going to be doing it on the fly. So the one thing that you do want to plan out is where are you going to, where's your sandbox? I am using the user 5 list that I have in my system to create uh, presets. And I also suggest that you have some kind of naming convention, you know, maybe just, you know, I'm using like preset, you know, preset A, preset B, etc. I'm keeping, I'm not doing a big naming thing because it just takes me a long time to do that. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm just minimally renaming my uh, user presets here. Okay, so let's jump in and get started. So I know that I'm using user, the user 5 list. And so... All I need to do is go ahead and use the joystick, press the button, and then I'm going to go down just below uh, my new preset A that I've got here. We're going to create a new preset B. So I'm going to press the joystick button, and here we are. Here's a blank preset. So you can see the name at the top. You can see the numeric de designation of the preset. And you've got your two blank, ready-to-go uh, signal chain lines. And we're just going to be using the top line. Now, the red circle, or sorry, not, not red, the, the circle that I'm moving right now is where a block that represents an amp, an amp and a cab, a dynamics effect, uh, an EQ effect, that's where they'll go. So um, I'm going to start, I'm just going to locate the uh, red squeeze. You'll recall, you'll recall that from... Uh, US double norm and we're just going to use some of the same things that we saw there so to add any type of block I'm just going to press the joystick button and that's going to take me into the list now the red squeeze is a dynamics effect and you can see the list of effects you have here and it goes uh, on quite a way the different types of things that you can add they're not all effects by the way there's amps and amps and cabs etc so in this case, I just want to go ahead and uh, choose Dynamics. And I do that by clicking the button. It shows me three distinct lists, Mono, Stereo, and Legacy. And in this case, I just want to go ahead and add a, a Mono effect. Legacy effects, by the way, are, are uh, some of the older uh, effects that they created in each category. Some categories have Legacy, some categories don't. All right, I'm going to choose Mono. And the second one down right there is Red Squeeze. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, and that adds a block to the chain there. And that represents a dynamics effect, and in this case, it represents the red squeeze. Now at the bottom, there's three simple controls uh, that you've got. And so you can change this effect by changing those simple controls. Many of the controls will have mix, uh, which is what percentage uh, uh, of the mix uh, is going in from this particular effect. The higher the percentage, the more the effect will be present uh, in the mix. And right now, I can play my guitar all I want, but nothing's going to come through because it does have any, it does not have anything to amplify through. So we'll get there. In fact, we'll get there right now. I'm going to add an amp. But one thing you'll learn is that there is the before amp effects that you'll want and there's the after amp effects. And when I when I say before and after I'm talking about before and after in the signal chain. So I'm going to actually skip ahead here a little bit and add the amp uh, down this way because I won't pro uh, by the way this is a good I don't know how I got did that but that's a good time to remind you of the home button. Hit home if something happens you don't like and you, you'll go back where you started. Okay. So I probably won't add too many things after the amp for this simple example. So I'm just going to skip on down here, click, and then we're going to go find the amp uh, list here. It's not on the screen right now, so I'm just going to scroll down. And we'll see the amp plus cab, and then we'll see the amp. There we go. So I'm on the amp list right now. You can tell that by the, the right-facing arrow. Again, I'll click, and I've got two categories in this case. I've got guitar and bass. I'm going to add a guitar amp. And 
I'm going to add, this is a, a modeled after a Roland uh, amp with a similar name, you know how they do. I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to add. Now at this point, with just those two things, I should have a working preset that allows me to make some noise. I'm going to see if that's the case. Well, it sure is. Alright, so I have a working amp just by adding uh, a working effect, I should say. Alright, I have a working preset just by adding those two things. But let's add a couple more. If you'll recall, um, before the amp in US double norm, they add the, the, the Minotaur effect. So let's go ahead and I believe that one is under distortion. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, put that guy in. And the third one down there is a Minotaur. There it is. Okay, so again, there you see uh, the icon for a distortion effect. So we've got two icons so far for us to recognize later. We've got the dynamics and then the distortion. And then you can see what the amp look like, looks like over there. And again, let's, uh, let's play that a little bit. And you can see we've got that distortion going on there. Okay. So this is uh, pretty straightforward here. Um, now, one thing that we're going to add to this very simple uh, preset is we're going to go ahead and add an after amp effect. We're going to add some reverb. So let's go ahead and move past the amp. And we'll click again. And reverb has its own uh, category all the way down here at the bottom of the initial list. There we go. And I'm just going to randomly pick a reverb effect here. Okay. Now you can see that many of the things that we're adding have a lot more than the three controls that the red squeeze has. And we're going to get into controls just a little bit later. But at this point, uh, we've got quite a bit going on with our preset. And let's see what it sounds like. You can hear that chimey reverb in there. Okay. We can tweak that all we want, we can add more stuff to it, but that's the basics of creating a preset. So what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and rename the preset. And the opportunity that you have to do that is when you click the save button. And as we all remember, save button's up here in the upper left. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And that gives me the opportunity to rename. Now a little bit more about these controls here. Um, you use the joystick to move from letter to letter. Uh, if you uh, press the joystick, it selects the letter that you're on. Um, you can also delete the letter that you're on. And I'll show you how to do that over here. So I'm going to just go all the way over to the right. And I'm going to start rotating. You, you can see the paradigm that they have here. That, that it goes through... Uh, uppercase letters and uh, then lowercase letters and then numbers and symbols. All right, there's B. And I don't have to do anything uh, if I just leave that there. Uh, that's going to stay as a B. All right, there we have our new preset B. To save the preset, use the save button in the lower right. Okay, and you can see that the uh, preset has been renamed up there at the top of the list. If I go back out to the main list, I'll see I have new preset B. And that is how easy it is to create a preset. To modify the preset we just created is a very simple matter of simply navigating again through the menus to the preset and 
entering the preset by pressing down on the joystick. We can then select any block we want to modify or we can add more blocks. You can also remove a block. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and just add one here real quickly so that we can remove it. So I'll just randomly pick one. Okay, so I just added that block. To remove the block, uh, select it, press down the joystick, and then from the left hand list, simply go up to the top and choose none. And that is going to remove that block for you. So let's say that we'd like to modify a block. So we're going to go to the amp here. And you'll notice that there um, are, you know, uh, five, six settings down at the bottom. Some of the, some of the blocks have very few settings, some have a lot. So one thing I want to show you here is how to page. There's two buttons that we haven't introduced yet, page left, page right. When a block has more controls to fit on one page, you can page across and it, they're, they're, in some cases you'll have three or four pages of the settings across the bottom and then you can page back with the left hand. Obviously you can make any changes you want there, but we'll, we'll actually go ahead and we're going to change a setting on our red squeeze here. So let's just dial back on the mix a little bit. So the mix button's right here. I'm going to go ahead and just dial it. There we go. Now, one thing to really remember is sometimes you make a, a change and you don't want to save it, but sometimes you do want to save it. If you don't save it, well, here's what happens. Now I'm going to exit and I'm going to come back in directly. And you notice that the mix is still where I left it. But if I go into anything else, and there's many, many functions that I could go into that would do this. So I'm going to go into uh, my preset A here and then come back out, go back to preset B, and you'll notice that we're back to 100%. So um, there are things that you, uh, sorry, I'm on the wrong one there. Let me navigate back over to Red Squeeze, and you'll see that we're back to 100% there. So here's what you want to remember. If you have made a change that you want to save, be sure to press the Save button which again is in the upper left over here. Now that's going to present that same interface to you, but all, you don't have to do anything except for press the save button here. And that will save it. And as we can see, if we exit and go back to preset A, there we go. Come back into preset B. And now we'll still have that same uh, mix number that we left with. Okay, so that's a little bit about um, making some typical kinds of changes that you want to make and how to save your changes and not lose them. Okay, so we have created our first preset. Now we'd like to modify the preset or any other preset. So let's take a look at some of the controls that are involved in modifying an existing preset. Okay, let's go ahead and venture back into our preset B that we created. And let's revisit uh, what we've got here. All right, we've got our red squeeze. We've got our minotaur. Continuing to the right, we've got our amp. And then we've got our chime reverb. And just a quick remembrance of what that sounds like. Well, that chime reverb is interesting. Okay, so let's talk about some of the kinds of changes that you might want to make. Obviously, you might want to add uh, a block, and you can freely do that just exactly the way we added them in the first place. But let's say you want to um, change a block. That's also very easy, depending on the kind of change. You can simply move to the block and start making changes as far as the controls down at the bottom. Let's say you'd like to move the block around in the timeline. Let's introduce a new button here, which is the action button, which is right up here in the top right of this section that we're looking at. When I click the action bottom, that select, uh, the action button I should say, that selects the block, allows me to do many things with the block, including moving it left and right, 
along the signal path and it also allows me to move it down or up to an alternate signal path. And we'll, we'll be talking about what that alternate signal path does for us. So to change a block, especially to move it around, you're going to want to use that action button. When you are done making the changes that you want, you can press the action button again, and that will deselect the block that you're working with. Another thing that you can do is you can essentially turn a block off by bypassing it. And you do that with the bypass button, which is right here next to the action button, in the, again in the top right. And the bypass button is cool because it can help you isolate uh, where a sound, a buzz, or whatever is coming from. So when I bypass the Minotaur, you'll see the noticeable difference in sound. If I bypass the red squeeze, the sound goes almost completely away. Uh, just like with real world effects pedals, um, you can't escape some, some noise uh, coming from those effects. And, but it's really uh, uh, easy to bypass, locate where that noise is coming from, or just simply bypass uh, for your purpose while you're playing. To unbypass, just simply click again on the blocks that you've uh, bypassed and hit, hit that bypass button. So let's talk about that alternate signal path. And to do that, um, let's, uh, let's use the, the reverb. So let's give a listen to this one more time here. Okay, you can see the level of uh, reverb that we're getting and the level of chimes. Now notice that the reverb is after the amp, which means that everything that has fed into the amp is being amplified and then fed into the reverb. Let's move the reverb before the amp. So action, move it before the amp, action, now let's listen. Hopefully you can tell that that reverb is uh, considerably uh, less intense because it's before the amp. Because it is uh, executing the reverb algorithm on an unamplified signal. Now, let's, uh, let's do another alternative here. Let's bypass the amp altogether by choosing See, I'm going to unselect uh, action here. I'm uh, sorry, it's going to select action. And I'm going to go down to the alternate signal path. And now that reverb is actually bypassing the amplifier, going past the amplifier. So let's go ahead and see what that sounds like. It's subtle, but it gives us yet a third uh, variation on, on what that effect sounds like. And that's what I would say about the signal path and the helix, is that uh, an effect before the amplifier, an effect after the amplifier, and an effect that is completely bypassing the amplifier has three different sounds and uh, you just need to pick the one that's going to work for you in the context that you are working with. All right, let's return to the setup that we had when we began and explore just a little more how the bypass capability helps you get the sound that you want. So as an example, um, Let's just say we're looking for a certain sound and uh, we realize, well, that chime, you know, may or may not work for us. Let's just go ahead and bypass that. Get the cable out of the way here. Use the bypass. Okay, that's not there anymore. 
Hmm, well, here's, here's this nice thing we have here. Hmm, maybe the chime actually contributes to that. Let's unbypass it. I just noticed how similar that sound was to the Dire Straits tune, so I just went with it. The point is that uh, the ability to bypass any of the effects um, that you have configured in your uh, preset can be really useful. Another aspect that you can change is the inputs at the beginning of the signal chain here. And you can see that there are several different controls that are down at the bottom. Uh, that you can actually configure and that apply to everything in the signal chain. So if you press on the signal chain uh, at the beginning of the signal chain, you press the control there, you'll see there's quite a few uh, things that you can configure, including gates and uh, input control and all of that type of thing. So there's uh, quite a bit uh, that you can do with that end. At the other end, you have configuration capability that relates to the second, uh, the second signal chain path down at the bottom, which we will cover uh, more in a later uh, video. Configuring the foot switches is actually very easy. If you're on the current version of your Helix, then you'll want to make sure that you are in the preset setup mode rather than the preset navigation mode. Your foot, switch, your foot switches should basically look like this rather than this if you're in the correct mode. But this actually says preset setup over here. Then you just need to make sure that you have selected the, in this case we'll do the red squeeze, and um, then press and hold the, the foot switch button that you wish to configure to enable and you don't actually press the button down you just touch it with your finger hold it for a couple of seconds and then click on save now you have only a limited time to do this and as you can see I did not press the save button within that limited time so try again press and hold for three seconds press the save button and now you can see that the foot switch reads uh, red squeeze and I'll move off of that block so that you can see that as I press the foot switch, the foot switch is going to turn off. The light on the foot switch turns off and back on. And if you watch the block, you can see also that it's enabling and disabling. And that's how easy it is to configure a foot switch with your preset. Thank you for joining us for part two of our Line 6 Helix series. Be sure to join us again for part three, which I have called of Impulse Responses and the Variax. We'll see you then.